Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk about uh, physical activity and cognitive decline, focusing on dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, actually, by uh, uh, preparing this talk, I have learned so much that uh, it's really exciting area, uh, and uh, I'm happy to share it with you today. I will uh, cover in my talk physical activity as a risk modifier of dementia and uh, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, also, we'll discuss the mechanism of action. How does physical activity act to modify neural degeneration? I think this is one of the most exciting areas uh, and, and uh, much has been learned recently. And I will end up uh, sharing some recent studies at Tel Aviv Medical Center that we have been uh, doing over the past five years. Let's start by looking at uh, figures uh, showing the uh, role of physical activity on the risk uh, to develop dementia on the left and Alzheimer on the right. This is based on the Framingham study. People at uh, baseline age, 70 years old, uh, healthy. 58% uh, were women and a total of 3,700 subjects. Uh, over the, the 10 years period, 238 subjects developed dementia and 188 developed Alzheimer. And it is clear from those two graphs that uh, the one who uh, had uh, less physical activity uh, had, had significantly higher incidence of uh, uh, dementia and Alzheimer's disease to link between the two. Uh, when we look at a uh, forest plot of, uh, as you see, many, many uh, uh, studies that have looked at the on the longitudinal observational studies about the effect of physical activity and all cause of dementia. Uh, clearly, those who are active uh, in physical activity are uh, having a lower risk to develop dementia. Uh, overall, 31% lower risk to develop dementia in those who have been involved in physical activity. There are many questions. What is physical activity? What is the dose response effect? But uh, in general, I think it is now well accepted that uh, physical activity is decreasing the risk to develop dementia. More interesting is a recent uh, concept, not just looking at physical activity, but also looking at what is called mind-body exercises, which practically combining physical activity with cognitive stimulation or cognitive training. And uh, just as an example here on the left is a, 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 a treadmill with virtual reality. The subject is looking at the screen and actually seeing uh, his own feet walking out in the park and uh, negotiating obstacles navigating and making decisions. Uh, this uh, is uh, an example of a, a, a system called Gate Better, a company that uh, was born in uh, Ichilo about 12 years ago. And uh, when we, one look at uh, studies that have combined physical activity and uh, brain or, or cognitive uh, uh, stimulation or uh, uh, activation, uh, it is again clearly shown that uh, combining physical and, and mental activities are decreasing the uh, rate of global cognitive decline. I've chosen to go into the TN uh, database, and uh, this is a study uh, uh, that uh, show the relationship between physical activity, cognition, and, and the development of Alzheimer's disease among people with autosomal dominant Alzheimer's disease genes. And uh, people were cognitively intact at baseline. 275 subjects have been uh, followed prospectively. Uh, as you know, the calculated uh, years from expected symptoms onset based on uh, uh, family history and uh, 
it is clearly shown here again that in spite of having the mutation that uh, can cause Alzheimer's disease, those with a lower physical activity developed the, the uh, cognitive decline earlier, significantly earlier here with a mini mental state exam and here with a CDR uh, showing that about 15 years difference between uh, having high and low physical activity and significant uh, uh, change in uh, cognitive function. So even if you are having the uh, risk for Alzheimer's based on your genetic background, physical activity can modify the risk by delaying the onset of uh, uh, symptoms of cognitive decline. Uh, the same uh, uh, consortium have looked also at biomarkers and uh, from a PIB uh, uh, PET, uh, uh, amyloid PET to uh, CSF uh, 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 data. And uh, one can clearly show two very interesting observations. If you are, we are uh, uh, separating the blue with low physical activity, less than 150 minutes per week, to high physical activity, more than 150 minutes per week. First, the spread among those groups. So this is not a homogenic group of people. Just to remind you, all are mutation carriers. And uh, it is clearly that even at baseline, in spite of having still normal cognitive function, one can see differences in uh, biomarkers that are related to Alzheimer's disease to uh, suggest that if you are physically active, you are uh, delaying the uh, neurodegenerative process as reflected by the biomarkers uh, here in this slide. Uh, other uh, observation is uh, in uh, uh, elderly people, uh, 1159 participants who were followed prospectively uh, and uh, looking at uh, total tau concentration in relation to physical activity uh, and the development of cognitive decline. This is a population uh, study. Uh, very interesting because they have divided the subject into those with high, medium, and low physical activity and a high, medium, and low tau at the baseline. And uh, I will just highlight here in global cognitive uh, uh, function that if you compare those with high tau and how high physical activity to those with high tau and low physical activity. So this is a group or, or two group of people with high risk for developing uh, dementia and Alzheimer. Clearly those with high physical activity are deteriorating low, slower than those with lower or little physical activity. So again, having the, the uh, background risk or the background biomarker for developing uh, dementia and Alzheimer, still doing physical activity is modifying the rate of cognitive decline. Similarly, but now looking at a neurofilament light chain in the serum, again, looking at high and uh, medium and low physical activity, and uh, high and low neurofilaments uh, in serum, one can again see that in spite of uh, having neurofilaments, high neurofilaments in the serum, you, uh, if you are physically active, you are deteriorating slower than if you are inactive. So I think from, from different angles, we uh, can now see the modifying effect of physical activity on rate of progression in people with higher risk and even uh, with uh, early neurodegenerative process if we are looking at biomarkers. Going from uh, 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 fluid biomarkers into uh, imaging, this is a, a, one of the seminal papers published in PNAS back in 2011, where they took two groups of people 60 subjects had aerobic exercise and 60 subjects had just stretching, non-aerobic exercise followed for one year. And uh, 
This study clearly showed that when you look at the hippocampus, those with high, uh, those with exercise, exercising, actually have changed the mode of deterioration in hippocampus volume. From in, uh, uh, this is people who didn't do any exercise, so there's a, a slight decrease in volume, and people with uh, physical activity uh, have uh, changed the, the rate of the uh, declining in volume. Uh, interestingly, when one look at the hippocampus at the anterior and the posterior uh, uh, part, only the anterior part of the hippocampus have had this uh, uh, change uh, in contrast to the posterior. So it's relatively specific effect on a part of the hippocampus. And uh, as one can see, Caudet nucleus and thalamus did not uh, have uh, any change uh, secondary or in relation to uh, physical activity. This paper is actually a systematic review of MRI studies uh, looking at the effect of uh, physical activity uh, on cerebral uh, 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 volumes. And uh, on the left is intervention studies combining different studies uh, with different methodologicals, uh, uh, as one see, uh, there's a large range of uh, quality. And on the right is just the effect of being fit or uh, fitness in general, uh, and looking at Alzheimer and MCI on the left, the blue, and in elderly people on the right. Uh, I will uh, 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 highlight the fact that physical activity, both interventional and general fitness are having a specific effect in specific areas more than others. So this is not a whole brain effect. It is specifically uh, uh, affecting uh, uh, frontal lobe, uh, uh, hippocampus, percuneus, anterior cingulate. So uh, physical activity is not a general brain health, it has specific effect, at least volumetrically wise, on uh, uh, areas that are more responsive to it. Interestingly, and I, I uh, chose to highlight it, that as far as a few studies, but this is one that have looked at the effect of physical activity on uh, amyloid PET, and this is 117 elderly age 73 who have uh, exercised or just had cognitive stimulation for one year, and there was no effect of uh, physical activity on the uh, uh, amyloid in uh, PET studies. So I think we all know that uh, uh, neurodegeneration and dementia is uh, having uh, many uh, different uh, aspects and it can be in relation to biomarkers, physiological factors, and psychological and lifestyle factors. This is all well known, the effect of inflammation, growth factors, cardiometabolic risk, oxidative stress, genetic aspects, the uh, cerebrovascular reserve, cerebrovascular blood flow, uh, uh, hippocampus uh, volume, uh, uh, and uh, inactivity in general, as well as uh, mood, quality of sleep, cognitive activity, diet, all are uh, factors that are uh, having an effect on uh, cognitive decline. Uh, interestingly, uh, all of them are modified by physical activity. So going from biomarkers to physiological factors, to psychological lifestyle, all uh, are uh, in different and uh, different ways, different mechanisms are affected by uh, uh, physical activity. And again, the question of adherence, those uh, type of physical activity, other factors that uh, are improving or decreasing the effect of physical activity should be uh, studied more and are of great importance, but I will uh, uh, not go into that in this short talk. So a disease that is so uh, 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 multifactorial, we, in order to treat, 
dementia and Alzheimer, we must look for a pluripotent drug. And the one that I would claim is the ideal drug is physical activity. It is pluripotent, affecting all modalities as I've shown that are uh, 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 in relation to the mechanism of neurodegeneration and rate of progression of uh, uh, dementia and neurodegeneration in general. What is most uh, interesting is the re recent understanding over the past decade that when we talk about physical activity, uh, we are actually looking at the muscles comp uh, component uh, uh, more and more carefully. And it looks like when you are doing uh, physical activities, we are uh, affecting the brain through the muscles. So biochemical changes that occur during physical activity are carried through the bloodstream to the brain to affect uh, 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 brain health. This uh, uh, axis is of uh, increasing uh, awareness and interest. And just to, to uh, uh, demonstrate it in a different way, uh, muscles and liver are, are releasing uh, compounds that are crossing the blood brain barrier reaching the brain and having this uh, positive effect on brain health, either through affecting uh, even uh, 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 epigenetically or by uh, producing uh, trophic factors, as I will uh, discuss in a minute. In a cartoon way, when a mice is running uh, on the rotor road, uh, muscles are active, uh, releasing PGC1 alpha, FNDC5, irisin, CT, CTSB, all are going into the bloodstream, getting into the brain, affecting uh, the, the amount of BDNF at the level of the hippocampus to cause adult hippocampal neurogenesis, synaptic plasticity, and cognitive function. And here, looking at experimental models and the effect of exercise when a, a, a human being doing exercise, plasma CTSB uh, is increased, and the same in monkey. And uh, uh, when a wild type mouse is doing physical activity, again, CTSB is increased, hippocampal neurogenesis and cognitive uh, 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 function is improved. When you are knocked out that, or knocked down the uh, uh, CTSB or the FNDC5 uh, genes, all this exercise effect is, uh, 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 is uh, decreased or, or, or almost uh, uh, cannot be seen to demonstrate the direct effect of those uh, uh, proteins and the effect on the brain. So a knockout mouse uh, or knockdown mouse had no effect on uh, 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 cognitive function or hippocampal neurogenesis. Uh, again, on but uh, from the uh, other side, overexpression of FNDC5 have caused even a further increase in plasma irisin, hippocampal BDNF, synaptic plasticity, and cognitive function. And uh, if we have a, a knockdown, this effect uh, is uh, 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 missing. So I think it's a nice uh, uh, cartoon to demonstrate the role of those genes on the effect of exercise. Here, I want to highlight uh, uh, in addition to uh, what has been said already, the role of uh, uh, lactate. Lactate that is produced uh, is, uh, by the muscles uh, in uh, exercise is going through the bloodstream into the brain and causing the same uh, trophic effect. So high lactate, high PGC1 alpha, FNDC5, BDNF, uh, all are uh, uh, having an, a positive effect on uh, neurotrophic factors that can uh, have uh, 
effect on hippocampal neurogenesis, angiogenesis, and uh, uh, cognitive function. So uh, here, just to, to highlight that if you have a knockout mice of the, the uh, uh, with uh, uh, low level of uh, uh, lactate, you are missing or losing most of the effect of uh, exercise. A paper that published in Science uh, uh, two years ago have really taken this observation one step forward. And, uh, and that uh, study, they have uh, taken blood from uh, uh, mice that were uh, uh, very uh, that were actively uh, uh, exercised for three months and transfused it to mice who had no exercise whatsoever and have uh, uh, discovered that just by transfusing this uh, uh, plasma into an inactive mice, you get all this positive effect of exercise to, uh, 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 to further support the, the observation that uh, physical activity is having positive effect on brain health through compounds that are produced peripherally and transformed through the bloodstream crossing the blood brain barrier and reaching the uh, brain to have its positive effect. This group uh, from, from uh, UCSF is actually uh, working now to develop this magic pill that instead of running uh, every morning for an hour, we will take one pill that will have exactly the same effect, hopefully, or maybe not. So exercise, uh, has a lot of benefit on uh, 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 Alzheimer's disease through decreasing inflammation of the brain amyloid beta, and in, in, uh, uh, increasing neurogenesis through the irisin, through the CTSB. Uh, lactate is an important factor here. Uh, it has an effect on cerebral blood flow, hypocomphal volume, and uh, all those positive effects on uh, brain health. Taking all this together, I think we should start looking at physical activity as the newest pluripotent drug. When doing physical activity, we are actually uh, bringing to the brain different compounds that have been shown to be effect effective and, and having a positive effect on uh, uh, brain health, decreasing and neurodegeneration. So prescribing this uh, uh, physical activity to uh, people, healthy people, or even people with uh, uh, diseases, we are prescribing medications. And this has to be a, 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 a delivered to the general public in a much stronger words. Uh, I think we have the scientific background to support this. Uh, uh, statement. One of the most interesting question is, is physical activity the same uh, and having all the same effect on the brain? And this is uh, one of those pioneer studies where they look at different type of physical activity, aerobic exercise, resistance exercise, multi-component exercise, and mind-body exercise, effect on global cognition, executive function, and memory. And interestingly, Global cognition uh, is improved by all different types of physical activity, but executive function uh, was more sensitive and responded positively to aerobic and resistant exercise. And most is interesting, and I would uh, uh, say again, this is a preliminary in one of the first uh, studies that have looked at this uh, fascinating question, memory was more uh, sensitive or responsive to, to resistance exercise and not that much to aerobic exercise. So maybe in the future, we will have to tailor the type of physical activity based on what we are trying to treat or what we are trying to modify. If we are uh, uh, focusing on memory, we should uh, be uh, focusing on more resistance type of exercise and uh, with executive function, we should add 
more aerobic uh, activity to our uh, program. And uh, I chose to uh, end my talk by uh, showing our uh, interest in uh, Tel Aviv Medical Center in this area over the past five years. This is a, a PhD by uh, Tamir Eisenstein and a group led by Yulia Lerner, Talma Handler, uh, uh, Galit Yogev, Noah Bregman, and Elisa Ash, who, uh, where we uh, tested the effect of home-based exercise. Tamir went to uh, the uh, homes of people with either uh, healthy elderly or people with MCI with a bicycle in his car, and they've exercised for uh, 45 minutes three times a week for three months at their home environment. And we looked at the effect of physical activity and general fitness on brain plasticity, cognition reserve, and hippocampal, hippocampus function. Uh, this uh, effort uh, is now uh, having uh, five uh, papers uh, out there. I will highlight three, the maximal aerobic capacity associated with hippocampal cognitive reserve in older adults with amnestic mild cognitive impairment and physical active lifestyle is associated with attenuation of hippocampal dysfunction in cognitively intact older adults and the neurogenic Cognitive plasticity is associated with cardiorespiratory fitness following physical exercise in older adults with amnestic mild cognitive impairment. I think uh, 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 this was a huge effort, but we are uh, 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 contributing to the uh, current knowledge about the role of physical activity in uh, elderly people and in people with MCI, showing the definite positive effect on different aspects of brain health. So uh, this is just a summary of a, a, a huge effort in our center that aerobic exercise and fitness may promote functional neural modification uh, in older adults uh, with MCI. This uh, modification can be expressed in hypocampal and non-hypocampal brain systems and physiological adaptation to aerobic exercise improved cardiorespiratory function may constitute key potential mediator of neurocognitive benefits following exercise in amnestic MCI. And with this, I would like to end up and thank you for your attention. Total. נהלו. אני סיימתי. אני באה.